Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher. Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. On this episode, we'll recap an eventful fall sports season at Howard Community College. First up is women's soccer. Howard takes on Potomac State in the Region 20 tournament. Let's send it over to Gary Williams. Thanks, Diane. The Region 20 tournament leaves no margin for error. The loser of this match will see its season come to an end. The winner advances to the Region Championship. The Dragons finished the regular season with 10 wins, 5 losses, and a draw. Potomac State finished with a mark of 10 wins, 1 loss, and 1 draw. Soccer analyst David Owassum is with us for this playoff showdown. David, describe the Dragons game. Well, Gary, for Howard to get the result they're looking for today, it's going to take them really capitalizing on set pieces, corner kicks, free kicks, things like that. Also, they're going to need to spring the counterattack using that speed and pace they have in those wide positions. Potomac State entered the final week of the regular season with an undefeated record, but the second-ranked Montgomery College Raptors changed that. The Catamounts now need to prove themselves against Howard and Montgomery to keep their season going. The winner moves on. The loser's season is over. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. We'll begin in the second half. Morgan Stewart wins the ball for Howard. Caitlin McDaniel plays it to Sylvia Kim. Tremendous ball through to Savannah Holt. Only three defenders back for Potomac State. Holt goes to Brittany Wartman. And goal for the Dragons, 1-0 Howard. Nice run by Holt. Nice run and great cross into the box. But poor defending from Potomac State, as they have two defenders run by the ball and nobody clears it. Throw in for ACC, Catamounts win it back. Rochelle Daniels, one touch. Sees Kylie Bazaar to the left side and goes to her. Here's a chance for Potomac State. The keeper, Savannah Hill, comes out to challenge. Bazaar with a superb touch. And what composure on the finish. Tie game. Linesman has to do better. Bazaar was in an offside position, but is academic at this point. With the season on the line, the Catamounts say game on. Potomac get away with an obvious offsides call. But poor decision by Howard's keeper to come flying off her line and not win the ball. She puts her defenders in a no-win situation. Throw in for the Dragons. Holt with a beautiful throw to MJ Stockford. Stockford plays it back to Devin Bazzioni. She scores! Bazzioni tests the keeper, and it ends up being a difference, David. Nice shot by Bazzioni but this is a shot that should be saved. I'm not sure if the sun was in the keeper's eyes, but you have to make that save for your team. Dragons move on as they put an end to Potomac State's season. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall for some post-game reactions. Brittany, what was the key to just dominating possession in this game, playing Coach Seagrove's style out there? I think it was a really a team effort, um, especially due to the practices this past week. We really focused and put in a lot of work to play defeat and uh, play a 100% game all the way through. Devin scored the game winner. How'd that feel? Felt pretty good. Honestly, I didn't think it was going in at first, but you take what you can get and hope for the best and try and work in another one. Devin, the team's on a roll right now. Big month. How do you feel about just the momentum your team has? I think we have really good momentum. I just think we need to make sure we're focusing and when we kind of get chaotic in the game to just calm down, reset, and play our style of soccer. So now that you'll be playing Montgomery for the championship, huge game, what's the key to just imposing your style and playing your style the whole 90 minutes? Uh, I mean, Montgomery's always a great match. I think it's important to kind of emphasize our style of play from the beginning. So that's winning the first 50-50 ball, playing a great first ball as best as you can and just setting the tone of the whole entire game. Brittany, where's your and the team's mindset right now, getting ready for this championship game, the biggest game we've had around here for a long time? We're ready, we're ready, bring it on. It's time for the Region 20 Championship. Howard and Montgomery battle for the right to advance to Nationals. There's only room for one of them in the JUCO Elite Eight. The loser's season is over. Montgomery enters the championship as the clear favorite. The Raptors have a 15-2 record. Both their losses were forfeits. The Raptors are ranked number two in the nation, and MC dismantled Howard back in September, scoring an 11-0 win. However, there'll be one major difference in this title match, Raptors first team All-American Jamie Montgomery will not be on the field. Jamie Montgomery scored six goals in the regular season meeting with Howard. Soccer analyst David Awasom will be with us for the championship. 
David, what makes Montgomery so tough? Montgomery, they're such a tough matchup because they have multiple players who are very comfortable on the ball. When you have that many comfortable players on the ball, they get into a rhythm in possession that's hard to really break. Also, defensively, they're very strong and fast in the back, so it's hard for opposing teams to break them down. Howard and Montgomery College renewed their rivalry in the Region 20 Championship. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. Throwing for the Dragons, Sylvia Kim splits two Raptors. Sylvia Kim, Jennifer Pineda, quick reaction, she makes the leg save. Montgomery College in possession. Alejandra Ramos through for Medrano. Their claims were offside, but the linesman's flag stays down. Medrano, Savannah Hill, huge save. 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Corner for Howard. CC Costable, excellent ball into the box. Alina Walters, glorious finish. Dragons take the lead. Howard capitalized on one of the ways they could possibly score, off of a set piece, which was poorly cleared by the MC defender. An excellent first time finish by Walters. Great technique to keep the ball down and on goal. MC is absolutely dominating possession in the midfield. They're pressing Howard high up the field and winning back possession within two passes. Howard are defending very hard for their lives, but unless they find a way to keep possession, things can turn quickly. 21 minutes remaining in this Region 20 Championship. Raptors in unfamiliar territory. They came in with a national championship in their sights, but now need a goal just to keep their season alive. Natalie Alviar to take the free kick for MC. Hirobayashi ties the game. A huge sigh of relief from the number two team in the lane. Poor marking on the back post by Howard. They didn't stick with their runners and resulted in a simple header for Montgomery. Tough to see from Howard. They're defending hard as a team and to give away a soft goal on a set piece is very draining. Tina Gray and Caitlin McDaniel put pressure on the ball and they disrupt Montgomery's possession. Kelsey Scott into space for Kim. Sends it up top for Savannah Holt. She's up against Andino. A tremendous amount of contact right on the edge of the area. Andino wins this battle. Nine minutes remaining, Montgomery in possession. No pressure on the ball here from Howard. Devin Bazzioni boots it away. And that superb ball finds Ariella Amaguana open in the box. Masterful finish. Comeback win from Montgomery College. The Raptors win the region for the first time since 2011. It's a pleasure to welcome six-time Region 20 champion coach Kate C. Groves to the program. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Coach, tell us, how did you think your players played in the Region Championship game against Montgomery College? They played the best they could possibly play. Um, it's definitely the best I've seen them play. Our biggest thing was we needed to disrupt Montgomery. Montgomery was clearly one of the best teams in the nation, um, had quality players out there but we made it difficult for him. So um, it was nice to see we scored first. Nice to see that we held that lead for quite some time. And uh, unfortunately, we just couldn't hold it the entire time. So Montgomery, a uh, well-deserved win by them. Uh, they're, they're a very good team this year, but uh, you know, we gave them a battle and made it hard for them. Were there, reflecting back onto the season now, were there any factors that you feel, felt contributed to such a successful finish into the, the region championships with such all freshmen practically? Um, I, I don't quite know. I think we, we had multiple conversations with the team and there were a couple instances in the season that we were wondering if they carried the same passion that the coaching staff did. And you know, we would have to challenge them a little bit to find out exactly what they were capable of doing what they thought they were capable of doing. We knew what they were capable of doing, but I don't think they really believed in themselves. And at one point we, we told our captains, you know, you know what, you guys go off, do your thing, and you discuss what you want out of this season. I said, you know, I can sit here and preach to you that nationals is our goal every year, but if they don't, if they don't want that or they don't know what they have to do to get there, then 
is it achievable? Um, so we had our two returners take them out and, and question them and challenge them themselves amongst the team. And ever since that day, our practices just went up a whole nother level and they proved to us that you know they wanted to be a team to to challenge you know for our national championship you know attendance now why would high school seniors want to come play here at HCC and play besides soccer? having me as a coach I mean that's, that's a big <laughs> plus there's no question no um, for one they get the opportunity to play um, hopefully they learn a thing or two and we have a great time um, even though you know we definitely work hard um, but you can still have a life you can you know most of our girls work so they still have jobs they still get their work done in the classroom they have a social life somewhat um, I mean that's on them if they don't but uh, we, we definitely try to keep it fun I mean when we travel I mean I don't know if there's any other programs that travel like we do we've got it down to a pretty good science now we always go to North Carolina We've already been invited back, so I'd like to continue that. Um, that's a great trip for us because it's before school starts, so we don't miss any classes. We get to go to the beaches of North Carolina, so that's a pretty nice setup. Play two good teams, and then you know if we have another trip, um, which we usually do, um, we try to make an experience out of it. So when we travel, we get we go to the local restaurants, we go to the local establishments, so that we make sure that we're supporting local places. Um, they've gotten to know us down in North Carolina, which is awesome because every time they see us coming in the door, they get excited because they know they're up for a good time. So um, I think overall it's a fun experience. You learn something and you make great friends. I mean, I, our team is pretty close, so it's nice. Thank you, Coach, for being with me today, and I wish you a lot of luck the rest of the season, and we'll see you next year. All right, thank you. It's time for women's volleyball. Coach Troy's Dragons and Anne Arundel face off in a mid-season Maryland JUCO Region 20 contest. Let's send it back to Gary Williams. Thanks, Diane. The Dragons are off to their best start since 2012. Coach Troy's squad enters the match with an 18-5 record, and Howard is undefeated against fellow Division III programs entering this contest. Anne Arundel is 3-8 overall, finding its legs as of late, however, as the Riverhawks are 3-1 in their last four matches. A D3 Region 20 win is on the line. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First set, Catherine Hawes sets Emmeline Wilkerson, and one of the nation's best setter outside hitter tandems gets rolling early. Riley Forker is ranked ninth in the nation with 3.64 kills per set. Sarah Few is 13th in the nation with 474 assists. 1912 Dragons, Anna Rundle gets into his system. Hawes, outside to Emma Matthew. Clean kill, and the Riverhawks are back within six points. Later in the first, Howard's on a 3-0 run. Few finds Essence Hoseclaw on the right side. Precision kill from the sophomore captain. Howard wins the first set, 25-13. On to the second. Taylor Anderson on the serve. Riverhawks can't control it. Elena Matson. Dragon jump on Anna Rundle, taking the second set, 25-8. Howard now going for its fifth consecutive sweep. Forker hammers the ball. Few with the assist. Riverhawks leave empty-handed. Howard makes quick work of Anne Arundel. Dragons secure a coveted Region 20 District G win in the process. It's time for some playoff volleyball. Howard takes on Butler County Community College in the Region 20 Championship. The winner moves on to play Columbus State Community College in the District G Championship for the right to compete at Nationals. The loser's season is over. Howard enters the contest on a nine match win streak and Butler is coming off an impressive regular season. The Pioneers won the Western Pennsylvania Athletic Association title this season. Butler is also the defending Region 20 champ. They're 20 and two overall and they're looking to advance to Nationals for the first time since 2009. Two 20 win programs battling for a berth in the district final. Let's go to the highlights. First set, Butler serving Howard. Sarah Few outside to Riley Forker, bangs one off the defender. Howard takes the lead. Later in the first set, three point lead for Butler. Dragons get into their system. Autumn Rogers with the solo block. Pioneers come back to win the opening set, 25-22. Second set, free ball for Howard. Sarah Few, 
Essence holds claw, crushes one off the libero. Dragons race out to a 7-2 lead. Later in the set, Pioneer is once again starting to close the gap. Brittany Bianco, outside the Mary Romano. Well-placed hit, Butler is back within three. 13-11 Dragons now. Alia Mustafa controls the serve. Few sets Elena Matson pounds the ball. Later in the second set, Pioneers have reclaimed the lead. Few outside the forker, ties it up at 23 all with the pressure on. We're going to extra points. Howard serving Butler. Bianco goes to Romano on the right side, nails it through. Pioneers fight their way back to win the second set. Time is running out for Howard. Sarah Fuse. Rowley Forker. Butler's defense steps up yet again. Pioneers win the Region 20 title. Butler advances to the District G Championship. It's time now for men's soccer. Howard Community College takes on arch rival Montgomery College in the season's most highly anticipated regular season matchup. Howard enters the contest with a 4-4 record, and the Dragons are searching for consistency in a season that has shown flashes of promise. The Howard MC rivalry is slowly regaining its magic. The Raptors and the Dragons battled to a draw last season. However, Montgomery has five wins over the Dragons dating back to 2012. Three of those were playoff wins. Soccer analyst David Owassum is back for this Region 20 showdown. David, how can Howard get its long-awaited win over the Raptors? Well, when you come into a tough game like this against a team like the Raptors, the only way Howard's going to really be successful there is they come in and they're very compact defensively. They can't leave spaces in the midfield or the back line. They also are going to be, need to be very dangerous on set pieces when they win them. Take advantage of those corner kicks and the free kicks. Montgomery College enters the match with five wins, four losses, and two draws on the season. Three of its losses, however, came against ranked teams. The Raptors have won four consecutive Region 20 championships. David, what do you expect to see from Montgomery? Well, Montgomery coming to this matchup is definitely the favorites. What I look for them to come in with is just to establish that possession game. They have very good midfielders who are also very comfortable on the ball. They also look to use the speed in those wide positions and is isolate the outside backs from Howard, making it very hard. They've played tough competition all year long in a nationally ranked schedule, so it's going to be very hard for Howard to get this win today. But I expect Montgomery coming in full strength and ready to go. Howard battles Montgomery College next. Let's go to the highlights. On this build of play, MC is looking to switch the ball quickly so they can isolate their winger in a wide position to see if they can get service into the box for their forward. Mama Busise with time on the ball. Here it comes from Cisse. I'm Brian Reyes Aranda. Very skillful turn from Reyes Aranda, and he got a quick reaction shot. Set piece for MC. Chris Rivera will take it. Find Sebastian Soto to Alejandro Avalos. Montgomery College jumps out to an early lead. Avalos' diving effort gives the Raptors control here early. What MC is looking to do here is look for the back post runner and see if he can flick the ball back across goal to any oncoming runners for a finish. Howard's defenders fall asleep on the oncoming runners down the middle. So once the flick occurs, it's an easy header. Throw in deep in the final third for Howard. Oluwatobi Asafeso. Christopher Rolon, beautiful cross. The header gets it out of the box. Falls right to Colin Sirio. No, it's off the crossbar. MC in possession. Ball is won by Asafeso through the Izzy Ebenezer. Still Ebenezer, makes a miss. Ebenezer, not enough pace on that one, but we're seeing Asafeso and Ebenezer starting to create chances for the Dragons. The momentum is starting to shift in favor of Coach Dragon offside. Constantino secures possession for Howard. That's poor for the MC back, but he redeems himself in a crucial spot. Howard's playing with belief. Serio, high up the pitch, plays it to Ebenezer. Will not be denied. It's all Ebenezer on the end line. Wins the ball, keeps it in. Ebenezer, off target but he's turning up the pressure on that MC back line. Later in the first half, Daniel Morales, Izzy Ebenezer. 
through to Oluwatobi Asifeso. Sends it in. Not an effective clear for the MC center back. Asifeso wins it back for Howard. Asifeso deflected, and it's Shahid Twyman. We're level. Study piece of work, David, from the Dragons. The buildup starts with an excellent diagonal run from Asifeso to put him in a position to get service in the box. What comes of it is a poor clearance from the MC center back, which allows him to win possession back and keep MC right under pressure. Also, nice feet by Asifeso to beat the defender. Very hard working bowl by Asifeso's persistence. 30 seconds till the half. Go in for Montgomery College. Diego Melendez Sosa doesn't get it under control, and guess who's there to make him pay? Asifeso leading the counter with 20 seconds remaining. Stops and goes to Ebenezer. Still is the Ebenezer. Sees the run of it, Gardo Gonzalez. Gorgeous cross. Dragons take the lead. Asifeso again with a tremendous switch of play to Ebenezer. This is a professional switch. Ebenezer, who then in a 1v1 situation, skins the Montgomery defender and plays an excellent ball in to be finished. Second half now, Morales on to take the set piece for Howard. That's Ebenezer, 3-1 Howard. Tremendous service on the set piece by Morales. He puts the ball in a place where the goalkeeper is indecisive. And then just a cool finish by Ebbett from Ebenezer. Good finish. Howard beats MC for the first time since 2012. Dragons win it 3-1. to one. It's time for some postseason men's soccer. Howard battles Northern Virginia in the Region 20 quarterfinal. The winner moves on to the semifinal. The loser's season is over. We've been here before. These programs met in last year's Region 20 quarterfinal. The Nighthawks ended Howard's season in the final minute of the second overtime. The Dragons have won four and lost five since the win over Montgomery. Northern Virginia has three wins, eight losses, and one draw this season, but one of those three wins was a five-goal victory over Howard. Soccer analyst David Owassum is back for this playoff match. David, what makes Northern Virginia such a tough stylistic matchup for Howard? I think, I think mentally, honestly, the Nighthawks have just had Howard's number just due to just poor defensive organization in the back for Howard. I mean, just simply playing balls over the top that Howard's not able to resist and getting in on that back line, creating matchups for the goalkeeper that they can't win. I think just the lack of defensive organization has allowed Nova to have Howard's number. Howard takes on Northern Virginia in a win or go home matchup. Let's go to the highlights. First half, here's Leland Jamison taking the set piece for Northern Virginia. Andre the show, massive save. 22 minutes remaining in the first half, corner for the Nighthawks. Falls to Jefferson Zelaya. Northern Virginia strikes first. Superb volley from the freshman out of Santa Elena, Uslatan, El Salvador. Simply poor marking by Howard. The Nova player left at the top of the 18 with no one marking him, but still a very good first time volley to finish it. Throw in for the Dragons, Oluwatobi Asafeso to Shahid Twyman. Not quite able to connect, but the right idea from Howard. Second half now, goal kick for Northern Virginia. The Dragons don't deal with it. And number 27 in green, Alan Duran jumps on it. Forces the show to make a decision. Duran sends it to Kevon Montero, 2-0 Nighthawk. Atrocious defending by Howard on a simple goal kick. The center back steps to challenge the forward and none of his defenders cover him. So that creates a simple 2v1 breakaway for Nova. Howard are completely unraveling in the back. Howard's center back steps up to signal offsides with the other center back keeping two Nova forwards onside. And one through ball creates another 2v1 situation that is very lazy and unorganized defending from Howard. Northern Virginia puts an end to Howard's season for the second consecutive year. Nighthawks advance to the Region 20 semifinals. Now it's time for cross country. My next guest just brought home the men's cross country Region 20 and Maryland Juco titles and led the women's cross country program to a third place finish at nationals. 
the best in program history. Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thanks, Diane. So talk to me about the women's finish at the Nationals. The women's finish, we knew the possibilities were there. We had had an injury bug early, and we knew people were coming off, so we were kind of edging them on, guiding them on. And when I talk to the women, I always tell them, you need to be confident, you need to be able to feed off your teammates, meaning support each other, run with each other. And if you have a moment to be courageous, take that moment, be courageous, and something good can happen. We mentioned that if we can have someone finish in the top five, someone else the top 10, someone else top 15, top 20, and, and I love the team. I knew we had a little drop off in numbers. And I said, and someone in the top 50, and the person I was talking about just gave me one of those looks. I said, it's possible, you can do this. And basically that's how the scenario played out. And I'm heading to the finish line to make certain everyone's okay. And uh, one of the coaches said, I think you, you got to the podium. I think you platform. And of course, technology today, you can pull things up real quick. I was like, oh my goodness, yes, we're third. And the women were there, and everyone's like hugging. And I said, do you guys want to know? She goes, yes. Yeah. So I showed them the phone, and all of a sudden, they're screaming and crying and hugging. And, and it was a very memorable moment in my career. Now, Abby, was this the, the best finish of a, a female runner in our history? Yes, it was. You know, um, Maggie, Maggie was fifth last year, and uh, Bridget Kelly, way back when, was fifth. But this is one of the top finishes by an individual female in our program. Now, on the other side of the house, our men had a tremendous year, yes. and they were seated possibly second or third going into we, the Nationals. We were seated third going in. Tell us what happened. Uh, good gosh. It, it was a very tragic mistake by meat management at the meet. Um, there's a, at the three-mile mark, there's a pack of 10, 12 men racing, and at times the students get so f focused on staying with that pack, staying with that lead runner, that... They need that extra direction. They need to have that person saying, look, you need to go here. You need to take that turn. Uh, apparently, they weren't given the correct information at the three-mile mark. So 10 to 12 men who could have been potential All-Americans went off course. Uh, did it affect the team scoring? Not for the first place team. Harper is just that good. But anywhere second through six, like in, in our sport, you, you have seven runners on the line. If someone has a bad race and you go in thinking someone will have a bad race, you might be able to recap. But that was two bad races for us. You know, Corey gone off target and one of the other runners did not have a good day and we ended up six. Um, Evan was disappointed. Um, spoke with Corey earlier today again. He's still pretty devastated. And uh, it's, it's supposed to hurt. You know, he, he was second going into that part of the race. He was right where we wanted to be, right where we talked about. Thank you, Coach. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you, Diane. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash hccdragonsports. Thanks for watching, and remember, Go Dragons!